So pet, oh yeah, yins are crazy. This is it right here. What up? And welcome into the Yins are crazy podcast. The number one sports podcast in the Berg. Do not get it twisted. My name is Mike Nicastro. You can find me on Twitter at Mike Up Sports One, ranting daily about the Steelers, the AFC North, and much, much more. I was away this past weekend, so I didn't get a much chance to rant about the Steelers' new excellent trade acquisition of new starting inside linebacker Joe Schobert for a six-round pick. What? Only a six-round pick from the Jacksonville Jaguars. What an absolute steal. And what a steal it is for us to have him on the podcast today. I'm so excited to drop this interview for you guys. He's the nicest guy. He's busy as all heck, but he still spent 15 minutes with me on the phone. And I'll tell you what, he has some really interesting things to say about the Jaguars organization, the Steelers organization, and everything in between. So I'm not going to waste any more of your damn time. Let's get right to it. Make sure you're following us at on Twitter, at Yenzer Crazy Show. We just dropped the fact that we are now the host of the Chris Wormley Show all season long on this podcast and on YouTube. Subscribe on Yinzer Crazy. Tell you what, it's all up from here, baby. It's all up for Joe Schober, too, because he just went from the Jags to the Steelers. You're going to hear from him right now. And we are changing the name of the podcast today. We are no longer the Yinzer Crazy Show. We are now the Joe Show, as we are absolutely thrilled to be joined by new Steelers inside linebacker Joe Schobert. Joe, first and foremost, man, thanks so much for taking some time. How are you feeling after this uh, hectic weekend, 72 hours plus? Yeah, uh, well, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, It has, like you said, been hectic. (laughs) Going from a team meeting at 6 o'clock at night in Jacksonville last, what, Friday to getting down here, installing a whole new playbook and meet new teammates, meet new coaches, and getting ready to play a game on Saturday. It's been uh, one whirlwind after another, but uh, couldn't have ended up in a better spot. So, for, especially for football right now, I'm happy with how things turned out. Was today your first practice in pads? Is that correct? Yeah, today was first padded practice, yeah. What uh, what major takeaways uh, do you have from that? Are, are, are you going to play Saturday? Is that still kind of um, in the balance? Or where are you at and all that? Yeah, I think the plan is to play on Saturday. Right now, I'm just trying to focus on my job and my responsibility in the defense and just make sure I get that stuff ironed out because there's a lot of communication that goes on pre- and post-snap um, in this defense, and I need to get on the same page as all the guys who've been playing in it for a while and have understood it and installed it together. Um, so that's basically my main focus. I'm not – hopefully, eventually, in the next couple of weeks, once I start getting it down, start expanding uh, my – voice of the defense and setting calls, making calls, and being a little more of a vocal leader on the field. But right now, I'm just trying to figure my way out through through the storm. No question. Uh, we're talking with Joe Schobert here on the Yinzer Crazy podcast. And of course, because we're a podcast, we're a bit of storytellers over here. So uh, we want to create a, a bit of a, a, a novel, if you will. I'm going to take you all the way back to, to Friday, as you were explaining Jags GM Trent Baalke walks in the room and comes up to you just a year after you signed a huge contract down there in Jacksonville. Your your brain probably has you figuring you're going to be living there for quite some time. I, I saw a quote said, I got a family, I got a dog, I'm trying to figure all this stuff out. What's the first thing that pops into your mind uh, when you hear you've been traded to the Steelers? Yeah, well, the first thing is like, oh great, what am I going to do? How are we going to logistically make this work to move and get the family together as fast as possible up in Pittsburgh? Because, like I said, I got a house in Florida. I got a wife and a kid and a dog down there. My cars are down there. Um, all the furniture and everything. And uh, I don't know if you know this, but during training camp, it's not exactly the easiest time to move across the country. So. A little busy. Um, yeah. That's honestly like the first thought that popped in my head. How are we going to handle this stuff? Uh, <laughs> making sure that everything gets taken care of so my wife and she's parenting solo right now doesn't have to do uh, all the legwork and I can help out a little bit. Yeah, they're still down there, right? Because I know we spoke briefly you're you're at Hell. I won't obviously give away your location but you're still kind of figuring out those logistics I I surmise. Yeah, exactly. I'm trying to figure out a place to live. Got to go see places around practice time and we're still in camp so it's not a lot of time. Um, So it's a adventure but hopefully we'll be able to nail something down here soon and get the family up and uh, the Steelers and 
the player personnel people have been great in getting me into contact with realtors, movers, etc. So it's been it's been it hasn't been smooth, but they've smoothed it over a little bit. <laughs> it's a great pet city, so your dog will fit right in. We're we're, we're excited to to have uh, <laughs> to have you a part of the community, no question. Hey man, I got I gotta ask. I, I you're traded for a six round pick as as compensation. Uh, obviously, that's something that I'm sure you're not thinking too much about at the end of the day. You just mentioned you're trying to figure out everything logistically, but is there a part of you in your brain that's like, I'm a Pro Bowl linebacker, I just signed this big contract, uh, that maybe feels slighted a bit, or is the motivation of playing in the NFL on Sundays enough? Well, I think there's always just a little bit of a slight when you get traded, even no matter what, unless you ask for it, obviously. Uh-huh. Um, no matter what's going on, just... Uh, I haven't thought about it too much, but the more I've been in the NFL, the more you realize how valued draft picks really are by GMs and people. So, I mean, if it was me, I would trade me for a first rounder, but I'm not me, so <laughs> I'm not the GM. Um, but it definitely will have a little bit of a chip on the shoulder this year. Just going back, going out to prove, winning a lot of games and having a successful season. But at the end of the day, I don't think you can think about it too much because the NFL is a business and pretty much all us players are just chess pieces on a board and getting mm-hmm. moved around by owners, GMs, and coaches, etc. To, to whatever their heart desires. So you got to kind of just take your lumps and go with the flow and trust that you know how to play football and you know how to deliver on Sundays. Well, it's a great perspective to have, and it certainly sounds like you'll fit right in with the Pittsburgh mentality. I'm going to throw a, another quote at you. Uh, this one was from a Jags beat writer. Um, and, and he said, The idea that I've gotten from Joe Schobert is that he's a very laid-back kind of guy. Schobert doesn't have that overbearing, energetic personality that is shared by all the players that Urban Meyer has signed and many of the ones he has drafted this offseason. So I ask Joe Schobert, how would you describe Joe Schobert? I mean, I said that's pretty accurate. I don't get, I stay even keel, don't get too high, don't get too low. Just the thing I always say about myself in the NFL is I'm going to, there's, I'm going to be accountable and I'm going to be available. I'm, I'm not a rah rah guy. I'm not going to get people pumped up and excited and, uh, motivated in terms of play I'm just going to be the guy who's just like you need to make the call you need to do your job in the moment the guy you can trust not, uh, to do his 111th on the field and then make some plays behind it that's who I'm going to be and I don't really get caught up in the, the emotions of getting too excited or too down on yourself because the longer you play in this business you realize everybody in the NFL is being paid to play football and they're being paid because they're very good football players so you're going to win some you're going to lose some um, but if you do your job and uh, have confidence in your abilities, you're going to win more than you lose, and that's how you stay on the field and make the plays. Well, Coach Tomlin and the team are no doubt excited to have you. Uh, he said he, you know, he doesn't need to give you any endorsement, that you've been highly productive every circumstance that you've been in, and he's obviously quite familiar with you from your time at Cleveland. What did that mean to you? And I'm sure you spoke directly with Coach Tomlin by now. What was that conversation like? Yeah, I mean, it's always good to be somewhere where people uh, – respect your abilities and are excited to have you. I mean, every, every coach I've met or personnel person I've talked to since I've been here has been extremely welcoming and happy to have me. And I goes back to playing against Pittsburgh for twice a year for yeah. four years. And then once last year, I couldn't escape the FC North even when I was down in Jacksonville. <laughs> um, and I mean, we had good conversations. I just think it's, he's given me a little space right now trying to get, uh, I've been meeting with Keith Butler a lot and yeah. Jerry was well, I can't say his last name, but a linebacker coach, um, Orlovsky, um, I think. And then he's been giving me space. We've had a couple of little brief conversations, just but mostly it's about uh, how things are going with the defensive install and how practice is feeling, how I'm doing, if you need any help. Yeah, you uh, nailed it, by the way. Like I just want to ask you to spell it, uh, but but you absolutely you, you, cr- you crushed the, the pronunciation. You mentioned Cleveland, dude. Obviously, you were awesome there. Four really good years, so so we're quite familiar with you. What were the conversations like in the Browns locker room leading up to Steelers week? Because those are going to be reversed now. Uh, I'm sure that's probably something that's that's crossed your mind. An and, and, and interesting dynamic, for sure. Yeah, uh, honestly, like thinking back, I can't remember too much like the leading up to dynamics. I remember when I first got here, or when I first got to Cleveland, uh-huh. we hadn't won a game against the Steelers in quite some time. Um, and then we didn't win any of my first PM. two seasons. Had a good two seasons. And then I think my third season was the tie, and then fourth season was the win. 
while we beat uh, on a Thursday night game. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was always like, I mean, AFC North games, I think, it's pretty on par with no matter who you are in the AFC North. Everybody hates everybody, so it's just a <laughs> fair enough. It's just a these guys think they're better than us. They're going to come in here. They yeah, they've won games in the future, but we're not the same old Browns. And <laughs> we're going to go and show them on Sunday night and, or Sunday afternoon and go kick some ass. Um, I'm assuming it's going to be pretty much some of the same coming from here after the season last year. There's going to be some bitter feelings and. People are going to want to uh, be able to put their foot down and uh, show their authority over the over the other teams. It's going to be just the same old AFC North battle back and forth. Fair assumption, no doubt, brother. We're all excited for that. Hey, i got to get you out of here with a couple Wisconsin Badger questions, naturally, uh, because you're going to be playing alongside one, of course. I think you're, you're well aware of that by now. A dude that you played alongside in 2015, where you kind of the – elder statesman on, on that team. How was your relationship with TJ Watt in college? Um, and, and what have you guys kind of talked about over the last handful of days? I'm sure he's welcomed you with open arms. Um, e- even though, obviously, he'd like to be participating a bit more than he is currently. Yeah, definitely. I like to remind people that TJ was my backup in college. <laughs> so I like to think I taught him all that he knows. But he's clearly taken... Uh, my teachings and my coaching from that one year <laughs> playing the same position in college and expanded on that quite a bit and I think he's probably paved his own way a little bit farther than what I could uh, take credit for these days but <laughs> um, it's just good getting back I mean T- I played with TJ and Derek at Wisconsin yeah. um, I grew up in the next town over from them so it's just pretty much once I got traded they reached out right away and just pretty much anything I if I need anything just let them know I know my wife's talked to Derek Derek's with Gabrielle a little bit, and they've got some young kids. We have a young kid, and they've been very helpful in getting us uh, some information we need to get this ball rolling for our family to get up here. Oh, heck yeah. You guys are all going to have to take a Kennywood trip. It's our big amusement park together and, and share some funnel cakes and whatnot. But, of course, postseason because you guys have a lot to focus on now. After after the seventh Super Bowl, that, that can be the case. Hey, I, uh, I, I read on, and I'm not sure if this is 100% accurate, but I found it interesting. Badger Wire, that the Steelers now lead the NFL in current Wisconsin Badgers. I'm not sure if you were aware of that. So with four, it appears the clubhouse leader, of course, yourself, Derek and TJ, you mentioned, and the new rookie, Isaiah Loudermilk. So this is what I'm going to leave you with, man. I, I think we're starting this campaign. you gotta, you got to be with me on this full stride. Can we get jump around at Heinz Field? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I think that's a good question. I mean, you guys got... Or Renegade. Renegade yes. right now, which is honestly one of the coolest uh, traditions. I mean, when I played here when I was in Cleveland, it yeah. was like, like, I don't like the Steelers. There's a lot of respect going on with this Renegade song and the highlight video and the terrible towel waving around. It's uh, quite the atmosphere, so I don't know if you'd, you'd have to fit jump around in between a different quarter. Yeah, man. I, I think you with want to replace Renegade with that. I think with Steelers Nation, you could play a song every four minutes at, at every at every break, and, and the place would go absolutely nuts. But I, I get I get what you mean in terms of uh, not wanting to um, you know make have too many. You don't want to water down Renegade. What's yeah, I feel like I feel like Renegade fits better in the Steel City than Jump Around. Fair enough. Jump Around's more college-y. It's got to be Wisconsin's <laughs> thing. Yeah. Saturday afternoons in Madison, Wisconsin. With- <laughs> however many drunk students there are in stands. Well, before you know it, that uh, th- those two parallels will be closer than you think. Um, <laughs> hey, Joe, man, it's we're, we're super excited to have you in, a bur- in the Berg. Obviously, um, you know, you're going to be undertaking a lot this next few days, so the fact that you spent 15 minute with, uh, minutes with us is just freaking awesome, man. Um, I can't thank you enough. Best, best of luck all around, and we're super pumped to watch you this year, and uh, enjoy that Renegade, too. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to getting on the field Saturday night in front of the fans and starting to put the, some steps towards uh, winning football this fall. When, so, are you, when are you going to be wearing the green dot? Anytime soon, Joe? I don't know. I think that they want me. They just want me to get my uh, feet wet. My position down first, and then I'll start, they'll give me that to start communicating. What do you mean, slacker? It's already been three days. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's only been two practices, though. <laughs> So, I'm doing my best. Attaboy. Hey, man, thank you so much. Best of luck getting the family up here uh, and all those good things, man. You're an, you're not only an honorary Yenzer, you are now an official Yenzer. So, yeah, soak that in a little bit, all right? 
Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> I know yins are crazy, but so am I. Number one sports site in the burg. Let me show you why. The latest stories in unbeatable podcast with your favorite athletes. You know you can't pause that. Super Bowl, World Series, Stanley Cup champs. Rising stars, burg personalities for the fans. We love our city. Always Pittsburgh proud. When you at your job or why you got your cell phones out. Breaking down the touchdown goal. And home runs, predictions, and interview. Who does it like us? No one cheering on the Berg squads. No pom pom. Don't know by now. It's yins are crazy. Dot com. So pit, oh yeah, yins are crazy. This is it right here. Yins are crazy. So pit, oh yeah, yins are crazy. This is it right here. Yins are crazy. So pit, oh yeah, yins are crazy. This is it right here. Crazy, bringing the best of Pittsburgh sports. Founded by Jordan and Mike, now your number one source for Pitt, Panthers, Steelers, Pirates, and the Penguins. Legends on the podcast, we're asking every question. Best sports city in the world is Pittsburgh. Trust these Yinzes, a new city fixture. In depth analysis, we paint a clearer picture. Bandwags or diehards, we deliver. Want the best sports talk? You come to my team. The sports fan cave awakens in 2019. No climbing. You should add Yinza Crazy to your bookmarks. Go ahead, you can visit when the all starts. So pit, oh yeah, Yinza Crazy. This is it right here, Yinza Crazy. So pit, oh yeah, Yinza Crazy. This is it right here, Yinza Crazy. So pit, oh yeah. Yins are crazy. This is it right here. Yins are crazy. So pit, oh yeah. Yins are crazy. This is it right here. Yins are crazy.